Hello everyone, my name is Lubomir, I work for Red Hat, mostly on maintaining tools for creating composers. And I want to tell you something about how it's done and what problems there are that we face with them and how we are trying to address those problems and where to move from there. So first, let's actually take a step back and give a very brief overview of what the Compose actually is. So in this case, composing means taking some content for Fedora that's RPM packages from the Koji build system and create something usable from them. Because like, if you get 100,000 RPMs, it's not fun. You can't really do anything. So we need to create ISOs so that you can actually do stuff, create container images, or simply an RPM repo with some structure. And that you can then consume with YAM or DNF. In Fedora, the tool that is used to create these composers is called Panji. And I happen to be one of the people trying to maintain it. And to give you some extra perspective, composers in Fedora are really almost everywhere. It's not just the Rawhide Compose, which is kind of hard to notice, because it regularly spams the devil list with reports. There are also other composers. So behind each update push, there is Panji running and processing packages and creating the repos with updates. So what are the actual problems that we are facing with that? And this is specifically for Rawhide and new branched releases. Well, they are slow. And that's not particularly great. Like, historically, the timings have been different. Like, right now, Rawhide takes just under five hours to finish. It used to be something like eight or nine hours only a few weeks back. But there have been situations where the compose took five, 15, 16 hours. And that's not really good. There are multiple issues caused by that, but the main problem is that if the compost takes too long, you can't really iterate on development. So once a new Fedora is coming to be finished, if you need to wait eight hours to, just to be able to take, test your fix, that's just not great because that basically gives you one fix a day. Like you come to work in the morning and you see, okay, the compost failed yesterday. You debug the issue, you write a patch, you build a new updated package, and then you wait until the next day because that, that's how long it takes to get an updated package. So let's be honest here. The, one of the big issues is just slow things are not fun in computing. Like, it might be nice somewhere else, but when you're waiting for your job to be finished, it sucks. So just so that we have some idea on what's taking so long, let's take an overview of what the Compose actually consists of. Like it is one big monolithic process, but it's split into different chunks and smaller pieces. So this is an overview of what everything that goes into raw height and how Punji is split to create that. It goes from left to right, and when there are multiple things on top of each other, that's where there's some parallelism. So it starts with a phase called init that basically just takes some data and prepares the general structure. So this involves cloning the repository with comps files. The module defaults files are processed here. And this is generally very fast, like under a minute. And then comes the first bottleneck, and that's the phase called package set. This is where we talk to Koji and ask, OK, give me a list of all the latest packages. And then we go and check headers on every single one of those RPMs, because we need to know what is that RPM actually like. Where can we put it? The output of this phase is a RPM repository with the packages, one for every single architecture that we are composing for, and also lists of packages, like what's actually in the repo. We don't want to. Like when we want to find some package, we don't want to open the metadata in the repo and search it there. And for Rohide, this takes something like 30 minutes, at least in the Compose that I test checked this for, which was, I think, Monday Compose. Then multiple things start working at the same time. Like 
on one hand, the first line, build install phase, that creates the installer image. The way it works is that Punji kicks off a task in Koji and says, OK, let's run Lorax to generate all the, all the necessary files. And then it sits back and waits for the task to finish. Nothing very much in Punji to optimize in that. The OS3 path is very similar. It's just that it kicks off Lorax with different arguments to create an OS3 installer that bundles the OS3 commit in there. The middle line here, gathering and creating repos, that's where some work actually happens. And this is where Punji figures out what goes where. So like there's everything, which sounds like it should be everything, but that's actually kind of a lie. Because depending on how you look at it, it's everything plus something extra, or it's just shy of everything. Like there's all x86624 packages, for example, but there's also something multilib, and not all 32-bit packages are there. So it's not just a matter of taking everything and shipping it somewhere. There's some extra logic. And everything is not everything that's in the compost. There are other parts. There's workstation, there's server, at least for now. And those are subsets of the packages. So in this case, we know a list of packages that we want there to be, like if it's workstation, then we probably want some GNOME stuff. But we need to check the dependencies and make sure that all it can actually be installed. Like we don't want to create a repo that contains bash, but not glibc, because then like, what do you do with that? And this is actually kind of slow. Like in the compose that I checked, the gather phase took altogether about one hour and 10 minutes to figure to go through all of the combinations of variant and architecture and figure out what packages should be there. And once we have the lists of what, put, what to put in there, we also need to make sure that the packages are actually in the compose structure because it's a bunch of files on the file system. We need to get them there. So we create hard links to the Koji volume and every single package is hard linked into the Koji volume and to the compose. Interestingly enough, this takes also about 10 minutes. So there's like 10 minute phase where Punji sits and does nothing but hammer the NFS with requests. It works, maybe not great, but it works. Once we know what we actually want to put in there, we can run create repo on every single combination of variant and architecture and create the repo with the packages that we just hard linked. This, interestingly enough, also takes about 10 minutes for all of them together. So again, not much to optimize here, although there are some possibilities. And once we have all of this, we can start building the extra artifacts that go into the compose. That's live media, container images, and what have you. The reason why we need to wait with this is that in order to create a bootable live media, we need the installer to finish. If Lorax fails to create a boot ISO, there's no way we can make bootable live media for any spin, any variant, anything. So that's why it has to wait. Again, in all of these phases, they are very similar. Punji just kicks off tasks in Koji and waits. And this can take from a couple minutes to an hour. Turns out if you optimize the builders correctly, it can be much shorter. Like when I spoke at the beginning about the raw at composes going from eight hours to under five, that optimization was done by changing the S390 builders and PowerPC builders and making sure they are faster. And that saved a huge amount of time. That actually makes me feel kind of bad because like no matter what I do in Punji, like I will never see such speed ups. So that brings us to the end of the compose process. In the image checksum phase, we look at all the generated files and create checksums. Those are kind of useful for people who want to download it and check that they have the correct stuff. And it's actually separated in a separate place because we don't want to duplicate the logic for every single task that is doing something. Just computing the checksums on all of the images takes about 10 minutes which kind of gives you an idea of how much stuff Fedora is producing. And the last part is the test phase, and that's kind of simple. We just run repo closure on the generated repos 
and some quick sanity checks on the images that we created. Like for example, if we create a bootable image, like we actually do and check the file that it can be booted, like it has all the headers. Because there have historically been bugs where we created stuff that we claimed, okay, this is a bootable image, and it turned out you can't actually boot from that because we forgot to run some commands. So that's not going to happen again. So what, I'm, what am I working on right now to fix? And that is, in this phase, I'm focusing from the start. So I'm now working on the package set phase. The, as I said at the beginning, what it does is take all the packages from Koji, mesh that all into one big pile, and use that as input for the following phases. This builds on an assumption that historically has been true, that there is one Koji tag with all the packages, and we can do this and it works nicely. But unfortunately in the modern, in the brave new world, this is not true. Because every single module that goes into a Compose has a different tag in Koji with the actual packages. So essentially what is happening in the current implementation is that we look at all those different Koji tags, pull the packages into one big pile, and then have to do some extra bookkeeping to make sure that the modular packages don't go where they are not supposed to go. This is suboptimal let's say. So the current work that is in progress is to split this and make Panji aware of multiple tags oh, sorry, and have different packets set for different tags. In that case, we don't need to do the bookkeeping. We just say, okay, don't want modules. Don't use these generated repos. Like, uh, this by itself is probably not going to speed it up too much but it will lay the groundwork so that we can actually do something more fun. Like one option is to reuse more stuff from previous composers. Like if we have one big pile with everything, in order to reuse something from the previous compose, we have to make sure that we only use the stuff that didn't change and it's difficult. If we have stuff nicely compartmentalized, in nice smaller chunks, <laughs> then, for example, for modules, we don't really need to rerun that because once the module finishes, if we are using the same module built in the Compose, we know what the packages were. We don't need to check them again because as, given how Koji is working now, once the module finishes, it doesn't change. So we could just reuse the stuff and not look at, at all the details in the RPMs. Another thing that we could possibly do with this change is to write a separate service that would listen on the message bus. And when it would see a package was built, it would just update the repo and the list of packages so that this would be continuously updated and all, almost up to date. And at, the, in the, at that state, like, basically the whole face in Panji is just asking this thing, tell me where the repo is and what the, what's the list of packages. And I will use that, and I will not, and the Compose will not have to wait for anything. Also, if this actually existed, we could split some other tasks from the Compose into separate runnable things. Like, for example, a lot of testing before release waits for installer to be created. But in order to create an installer, you need to have a repo with the packages. So if that repo was always there, always up to date, you just kick off the task to generate the installer and you would wait the 20 minutes it takes to create it. And that would be a fairly nice improvement in terms of waiting for testing your patch. But there are also other things that we could look into optimizing and some of them I have actually started but I don't have specific benchmarks so I will not tell you too many details. Like for example, one thing we could do is make try and make faster create repo. Like you may think like create repo C is already faster than the old Python create repo, but we could make more assumptions. Like for example, we know that builds in Koji have NVRs. And if those two, NVR, if two NVRs are the same, like we know the RPM is going to be the same if we get it with the same signature. So we could use this logic and not look into every single RPM, like if we know what the RPMs were in the old Compose. If the NVR didn't change on them, 
we can just reuse the data. So there might be some possibility for optimization here. It would not be a general tool, because in the wild internet, you can find RPMs that don't hold, where this assumption doesn't hold. It probably doesn't always hold even in Fedora. Like there might be case, cases where this is broken, but it's something to look into. And other things that I plan to do is to look at the code paths that were historically not really used that much. Because, for example, I found out this out actually when I was preparing this talk. I looked at the timing of the compose and it turned out that figuring out what goes into the modular variant takes longer than figuring out what goes into everything, which is much, much bigger. And this is just because the code that is used to create modular variant is a different code path. It's working slightly differently to everything. And this was not optimized because it wasn't historically used that much. And like this is a place where someone with just knowledge of Python could go and check all the loops and make sure that they are correct. There's the stuff is done in correct order. This could bring us some speed up as well. So that's basically the current status and where I plan to move from that. So expect some results in the next 10 to 15 years. <laughs> And if you have any questions, I would be happy to try and answer that. Um, we can also skip in, uh, creating of these images if we know nothing has changed in those images. Yes, that's a very good point. As Mohan pointed out, if we know that nothing changed in a particular image, we could completely skip creating it and just use the previous image. And again, this is something that could be helped if we correctly track all the steps in before that particular image in the compost. Right now we can't really say what changed because all we have is like, we can say like, okay, the configuration for the compost didn't change. But generally in Rawhide, some package is changed in the day-to-day -day business. But we have no way of tracking what image is in what, uh, what package is in what image. So we can't really make this optimization right now. But it's something that is possible and nice and would be useful. How yeah? That's a good point. It's only a couple of minutes. Generally, yes, it would probably be an improvement because right now the test phase is done in seri serialized. So we run, we check one image after each other and we run create repo for one repo for another, another, another. The actual creation of the repos is using a thread pool. So we are using like four create repo C processes at the same time working on the images. So yeah, this would also probably be a possibility to change that and test this as soon as it finishes. The other possibility is to just not care and turn these tests off. Yes. You say that it's all done over MFS. Yes. Um, how do you tie it to MFS? So Panji is consuming a bunch of packages from uh, Koji, and it's doing that by directly accessing the Koji volume. So the same volume is mounted in Koji and Panji. But this is this is always MFS. I mean, it's you have some filers that only access to through MFS or That's a good question, but I don't have an answer for you. Sorry. NFS, uh, even in the uh, latest versions, it's relatively chatty. So in chat duration, there is a lot of things going on the network. And for example, in SMB protocol, uh, in recent kernels, uh, there was work on composite and requests, which made it uh, okay hmm. with non-optimized things, like 30 or 40% faster than already fast, but it's, it really depends on what, what is on the other end, what is your NFS server. It's a meta. Then, then we can forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, additionally to that, it's NFS v3. We, we yeah. went to NFS v4 and we started running into like all kinds of weird problems. 
problems. So yeah, that, that is that is one thing, uh, and of course with the open workshop. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To summarize for the recording, the NFS is not particularly great here. We tried doing something newer and cooler, but it didn't work. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. I think, I have to check this again, but I think it waits for all those tasks to complete and then, you know, gathers up, figures out what failed and what didn't fail. But if one of those fails and it's a required image, then it fails to compose. But it waits for all of the rest of them to fail. So one op possible optimization here is it could look and if, if an image fails and it's a required image, say cancel all the other builds, fail now, and fail quickly. Yeah, so this is basically an implementation detail of how this works. Essentially, Punches spawns a thread for each of the phases, and they go and do their own work, but the main thread that is, that is monitoring is like waiting on every single one of those in some order. So if one finishes sooner, it waits until it, it's, it's until its turn to wait for it. So th this might be possible to fix in some way. Like for example, I would really like to replace the threads in this case with Python free async because it's not really doing anything, it's just waiting. Right. But I've seen cases where, you know, yeah, it's fails really quickly and then you wait like three hours and then Yes, that's very much possible. Like the first task you spawn will fail immediately but you still have to wait for everything else to finish. This is probably fixable in the code. Uh, and the second thing is, I wonder if it would be good to get more visibility into these phases. Can we maybe put the times or timestamps in the Rawhide report? Like, have it say, init phase was this, start at this time, finish this time, that kind of we we probably could do this. So the request is, can we make this more visible? So for starters, like whenever the phase starts or ends, we send a message. So if you're actually interested from that, you can listen to them and do stuff with them. But it's also possible to generate some summary. It goes with a caveat that, as I said, with the images, like for example, the timing on the face is not really representative of how long the individual task took. Because for some, if there's like one really long phase, but it happens to be the first one to be waited on, then every other one would, will be artificially inflated. And actually, we wanted uh, to track those times, but we could every task not the phase and put it in the compost mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, ha having more visibility into what takes how long is something that would be nice. But it's not just a simple diff between timestamps in the log because of things like waiting for some other stuff. Yes? Okay, so the question is what is what time we want to reach and what good will will it break uh, bring? So we don't have a set time, like as fast as possible sounds good. But the main issue we have with the long composite right now is it takes too long from writing, building a fixed package to seeing some artifact that you can test it with. That the cases where the compose is broken and, and somebody says, oh, that's easy, this is this fix, wait four, six, whatever hours, and it didn't fix it. So you need to do another fix to that, and it, it's blocking all the QA, and nobody can test it again. Actually, your idea to fail quicker would be great. Yeah.
Yes? Just, I guess, like, point to that, uh, to add and point to the, the, the point about needing to, to fail quicker. Um, there's a there's a continual push, I think, in all in all parts of, of IT and, and technology. You know, Red Hat is the same internally, and I think even more externally, of um, trying to use trying to get resources that are. small subset of speculative repos outside our infrastructure that people can access to find out if those changes work before we engage in a whole repo. Not necessarily making a composite block of that, but being able to spin many of those over the course of a day in addition to our normal compose processes. Of course, that means that brings up problems of how do you have the storage sync Another way to look at this problem is it would be great if we enabled Fedora contributors to run Compose on their own. Absolutely. Right now, like, if you don't have access to the infrastructure, you're out of luck, basically. In addition to that, though, but there's the, the part that's all off the edge here, which is the CI and the gaming stuff, which will also help this. Because then if there's a new anaconda or whatever, we have a test that catches the bug before it gets into the Compose and saves us that. not interesting to me to talk about like doing doing that and not and not improving Fungi. I think like both of those things should you know should be doable. There is uh, one last thing I wish uh, where uh, it would be appropriate to minimal processing but it's still in, in Fedora itself but very minimal so that uh, all these Anaconda and uh, uh, main packages when they when it hits a build it will run this minimal compose uh, probably get rid of this one So Panji itself supports that. The problem is that you probably won't have access to the volume with packages. So if we solve that somehow, you would be able to just take the config from production and say like, okay, instead of F30 compose tag, I want to also use my F30 Python tag. And it will figure, Panji will figure out like what are the latest packages, so that would work. The only problem is the infrastructure side. But we need to make sure that the packages can be consumed somehow differently than direct NFS access. But I think you can count uh, that for most of you are like member of If you convince Fedora. people from the infrastructure to give you permissions, then you can. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's our key problem to solve, I think. 
Yes. Not necessarily for you, but for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And uh, coming back to the sidecar question, probably for now you can uh, uh, brilliantly create a thank you resource composer there. Uh, not particularly by you, you can uh, start in the compose, probably you can create a replica with reverse engineering. Uh, they can do uh, something about it. Okay. Okay, so I think we are out of time. So thank you very much for coming and enjoy lunch. <laughs>